Greetings, everyone, and uh, welcome to our uh, special worship celebration for Ash Wednesday. We are delighted that you're able to join us from the safety and comfort of your own home. And as we now all mark the beginning of this holy season of Lent, and of course, uh, the pandemic crisis continues to impact our worship and the way we gather or don't gather. Um, and so for all of the health and safety uh, reasons and precautions, we will not be doing the imposition of ashes, but we are still inviting you and all of us to reflect on that, to think about our mortality and our human uh, connection with God. So we're delighted to have you with us and our worship celebration now continues. The Lord be with you. As we are gathered together in God's presence, I invite your prayers to join with mine as I lead us in our prayer for this Ash Wednesday. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthy of lamenting our sin and acknowledging our brokenness, may obtain of you the Lord of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now listen for the word of God that is spoken to us in Scripture. The first reading is from Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their light has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God? Blow a trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, Gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? Hear what the Spirit is saying to us, the Church. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. So I now invite you to join with me as uh, we say a portion of Psalm 103. Uh, you have responses, so we are going to recite this antiphonally. Antiphonally. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always do so, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sin, nor rewarded us according to our weakness. For us, 
as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sin from us. For he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. When the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place shall know it no more. On those who keep his covenant and remember his commandments and do them. Be to God. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians. Beloved, we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ. Be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance and afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of the righteous, with the weapons of the righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and, see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. Hear what the Spirit is saying to us, the Church.
The Lord is with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Lord, you are Jesus, Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward, but when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Look, truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, don't do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But, but when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Look, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. No, instead store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. Because where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of Christ. I invite your prayers. Holy God, we thank you for the gift of your word. And as we think and contemplate on these things, we pray you open our hearts and our minds so to hear you. Amen. So, uh, today is Ash Wednesday, marking the beginning of the season of Lent. So I, I'd like for us to reflect a little bit on all three passages of scripture that we heard uh, today. First with Joel. So we know that Lent is a penitential season. That means it is a time when we are called to repent, to turn back to God, and to redirect our hearts toward God. It is a time to push away distractions and focus all the more on our relationship with God. So as we begin Lent now, the first reading from Joel reminds us of this call. The Lord himself invites his people, including all of us today, saying, People, return to me with your whole heart. Why? Because when we stray from God, no matter how far we have gone, God is always calling. God is always inviting us back. 
Our creator God is like a loving father with outstretched arms longing for us to receive his warm embrace. God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and rich in kindness. God calls us to acknowledge and to repent of our sin so that God can freely pour out holy forgiveness upon us. And I'm sure everyone here and at home worshiping with us in one way, shape, or form are all in need of God's holy forgiveness. Joel reminds us that God desires our hearts. God loves us and wants to be, yearns to be, calls us to be in relationship with us. Keep in mind this Lent that when we mess up, when we make mistakes and do the wrong thing, when we fall into sin, God is always right there to pick us back up and help us get on our feet and get our feet under us one more time. That's good news. <laughs> and then we hear uh, from Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth, how this passage explains how it is possible for us to experience God's forgiveness. We feel it, we know it, it's tangible. You see, Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sin. Jesus took all the sins of the world upon himself when he died. So, Jesus did pay the ultimate price for our wrongdoing, for humanity's wrongdoing. As a result, we may, as Paul says, become the righteousness of God in him. In other words, we can be purified from our sin and become, again, a holy people. We are holy. This cleansing of our sin made possible by Jesus and received through repentance, faith, and the sacraments is what leads to our salvation, what restores our relationship with God. So during this season of Lent, and in preparation for Good Friday and Easter, we have now the opportunity to reflect on the magnificent gift of God's grace and experience it through repentance and turning back toward God. This is a gift of God's grace and, it, and we experience it through our repentance and turning toward God. I, I'm remembering um, when I was doing my doctorate of ministry in my first year, one of the professors, one of the theological professors used to say that the mess in our lives is the place where we and God agree that something needs to change. That's what repentance is all about. Getting honest about our mess, confronting it, owning it, turning back to the ways and wills of God. And then we hear uh, from our gospel story today from Matthew. In this passage from the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus teaches us about prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. These are the three traditional pillars of Lenten observance. So, during this season of Lent, as always, we are encouraged to focus on prayer. Now, this can be done by adding or increasing silent prayer uh, each time during, a, during the day, you, you pick a time, taking time to pray as a family, or taking the time to attend online worship more regularly. And while we are all uh, staying home and staying safe, this is 
a big opportunity for us to really spend time with God, searching our hearts and offering ourselves to God in prayer. We are encouraged to give alms. Almsgiving refers to acts of charity, like giving money, food, or clothing to those who are most in need. And of course, this can include offering more of our time, talent, and treasure in service of God, because God calls us to love our neighbor as ourselves. So when we love our neighbor, we are exercising and developing and growing in our service of God. Finally, we are also asked to fast during the season of Lent, which includes abstaining from meat on Ash Wednesday, if you choose, and abstaining from meat on all Fridays, if you choose, <laughs> plus observing a day of fasting on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. This is about the tradition of giving something up for Lent. The purpose of fasting is to help us be detached from the material pleasures of this world and narrow our focus and bring all of our focus and our attention on God and on our relationship with God. The late Archbishop Terence Finley, years ago, offered a, a Lenten reflection about how we might fast, and I'd like to share this with you. He says, it may be helpful to try at least one of these thoughts each day for the season of Lent. Fast from excess. Feast on simplicity. Fast from negatives. Feast on alternatives. Fast from discontent. Feast on gratitude. Fast from gossip. Feast on silence. Fast from self-concern. Feast on compassion. Fast from bitterness. Feast on forgiveness. Fast from anxiety. Feast on faith. Good words. Good Lenten reflection from the late Archbishop Terence Finley. With all these practices of Lent, Jesus, in this gospel passage, calls us to be humble and to do them with the right intention of serving and of worshiping God. So as you are home, thinking about these things, pondering what this particular Lenten season might mean for you in the year of our Lord 2021, I invite you to think about these questions. Meditate, pray the questions, and reflect. Ask yourselves, am I openly, honestly, and enthusiastically sharing the message of Jesus Christ with family members and those who I encounter in everyday life? Am I finding ways of making God known in the world? Do I have a gracious and patient attitude with the people in my life? Do I look for the best in others, or do I have a judgmental attitude? Am I spending enough time contemplating, studying, internalizing God's word? and praying? Do I have a thankful heart? Or am I constantly complaining about situations and people in my life? 
what are the lurking sin problems, the places where I turn away from God? What are the lurking sin problems that still nag at me and tempt me? Do I speak up for the less fortunate? Or do I choose to remain silent and inactive? Do I stand up for my Christian beliefs? Or do I compromise my faith in order to be comfortable, safe with the status quo? What is God dealing with me about right now? What is the mess in my life? What is God dealing with me about right now? Exercising to improve my health? Spending more time contemplating God's word? Sharing my resources with others? Advocating for the poor? Exercising justice? Putting love before all else? And then finally, a last question that you might consider. When people look at me, when people look at you, do they see a reflection of Jesus? I wonder. These are questions that we are invited to think about, to pray about, and to, if you will, plant within us so that through these next 40 days, we grow. We grow and we be, and gradually we become a new version of ourselves created by God, for God, through God, because of God. May the glory of these 40 days strengthen and uphold us in our faith journey and in all that we do and in all that we are. To God be the glory. Thanks be to God. friends and family in Christ. Every year at the time of the Christian Passover, we celebrate our redemption through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lent is a time to prepare for this celebration and to renew our life in the Paschal mystery. We begin this holy season by remembering our need for repentance and for the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We begin our journey to Easter. As we begin our journey to Easter, I invite all of you, therefore, in the name of the Lord, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination, penitence, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, and by reading, meditating, and internalizing the Word of God. If you choose, I invite you to kneel or simply remain seated, but let us now come before our Creator and Redeemer.
litany of penitence, and you are all invited to join with me uh, as we confess our sins in our, in our prayer of confession. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you, to one another, and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth, that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We are not continuing with the imposition of ashes, but I will still invite us to say these words as we reflect on ourselves, our mortality, and our relationship with God. Friends, family, remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. In life and in death, I belong to God. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation. That we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and compassion of your Son, our Lord, Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. My friends, life is short. And we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of all those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon all that you do, be upon all that you are, be upon your Lenten journey, and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Disciples of Jesus, observe a holy Lent. 
Loose the bonds of injustice. Break the yoke of oppression. Feed the hungry. Shelter the poor. Amen. Amen. Amen.